everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to solve systems of equations by graphing. There's three different ways to solve systems of equations. We'll be going, making a video for each one. So this is the first one um, by graphing. So let's just talk about what a system of equations is. Um, remember that an equation is a mathematical sentence where um, two statements are set equal to each other with an equal sign. So um, we're just doing linear equations here. And a system is when you have more than one of these equations. So we're only going to focus on having two, um, but there are, you'll see later on, you can have three, four, you can have as many systems as you want, but we're just going to stick with two. And so today we're going to talk about graphing specifically. What you need to know to solve systems of equations by graphing is you have to know how to graph. So if you don't know or if you're a little shaky on how to graph your lines, there is a video on graphing linear equations. So you would want to review that before you start this. But if you know how to graph, that's really half the battle here. Um, so let's just take a look. Okay, so here's an example. If I want to solve this system of equations by graphing, all I need to do is graph each equation on the same set of axes, and then wherever they intersect, that point is the solution. So if you know how to graph these, you're golden. So I color-coded them, so let's start off with the top one. So if we remember how to graph that, it's already in slope-intercept form, so that's great. I'm going to start at the y-intercept, which is 2. So I put a dot on 2 on the y-axis, and then I follow my slope, which is up 1 to the right 2 up one to the right two, up one to the right two. Do that a couple times and I'll connect those dots. Okay, I'm gonna do the best I can. You want to, when you're solving by graphing, you really want to take the time to do, um, to try and connect your dots as nicely as you can because it's gonna be important when I graph the other one, I need to see exactly where they intersect. So let's graph this next one. y equals 3x minus 3. So my y-intercept would be negative 3. So we'll start down at negative 3, put a dot. And then I follow the slope, which is positive 3. So that means go up 3 to the right one. Up 3 to the right one. And ding, 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 right there, I have two points that overlap. So that's going to be my solution point. All right, so I'll draw this one in. Okay, so the solution for these two, I'll write it over here, solution, it's always an ordered pair, so make sure you write it as such, and that would be the point 2, comma 3. Okay, a nice way to check that you have this right is by taking the point 2, comma 3 and plugging it into both equations. Both. It has to be both and it has to work in both. If this point works in both of them, then you know without a doubt that you have it right. Okay? So, because there's only going to be, think about it, if you have two straight lines and they're going to intersect, it's either going to happen once or it's going to happen a whole lot of times. We'll talk about that later on. But either it's going to happen, usually it's only going to happen at one point and there it is. We'll talk about the other cases in a few minutes. Okay, let's take a look at these two. I have y equals x. Funny enough, like that's one of your most simple lines that you could draw, but kids always forget like what to do because they're like, well, y equals x. I, I don't even know where to start. Well, y equals m is supposed to be. There's nothing here, so we're just going to start at the origin, and then my slope is whatever is in front of the x. If there's nothing there, remember we assume it's a 1. So I'm actually just going to start at the origin and follow the slope of up 1 over 1. Okay, so I'll do that right now. So start at the origin, and then follow that slope up one to the right one. Up one to the right one. Put a couple dots, and now I'll connect those lines. And I'm gonna try and draw, you want to, you, you really do wanna use a ruler because when you're solving by graphing, the more precise you can be, the better, okay? But now this guy here, he is not quite in slope-intercept form yet, so I would just have to rewrite it so that he is so I can graph it. 
So the only thing I'll need to do is subtract the 1 to the other side. So now I have y equals 4 thirds x minus 1. And now that is in graphable form. So I'll start at negative 1. And then remember that slope tells me to go up 4 units to the right 3 units. So from there I'll go up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3. Hey, there we go. Up 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3. So I already have my point. I know where it is. I'll do my best to connect these lines these dots okay so this time I know my solution we always list it as an ordered pair and in this case it's 3 comma 3 and again I can double check that make sure that it works in both I certainly know that it works in y equals x because 3 is equal to 3 okay let's see what we have next Okay, so now it looks like for these two, neither one of them is in graphable form. So I will just rewrite them so that they are. So it looks like for this one, I'm going to have to subtract the 2x to the other side. No problem. So now I have 4y equals negative 2x plus 6. Remember, you want to write the x term first. And now I have to divide everybody by 4. Okay, so I have y equals negative 2x divided by 4 is now a negative 1 half x. And then 6 divided by 4, um, I can reduce that to 3 halves, or that is 1 and a half. All right, and now this one down here, uh, let's see what I'll have to do here. I'll have to subtract x to the other side. So I have 2y equals negative x plus 3, and then divide both sides by 2. And I have y equals, I'll write that as a negative 1 half x, and then 3 divided by 2 again is 1 and a half. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. Now, yeah, it's a little inconvenient that I'm starting at 1 and a half. That is one of my limitations of graphing, is that when I don't have um, an integer, it's a little weird to graph, but a half isn't so bad, so I can still work with that. So one and a half is going to be right about there, and then I have to go down one unit to the right two units. So down one to the right two. Down one to the right two. Down one to the right two. Okay, connect those dots. Oops. And now we'll do the orange one. Start at one and a half. Hmm. And then follow the slope. Down one over two. Well, by golly. As it turns out, let's see what color this makes. They're the exact same line. Well, of course they are. Look at the equations. Look at that one. Look at that one. Aren't they the exact same thing? I actually didn't even have to bother to graph them because I can tell that the equations are exactly the same. So when this happens, we have infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Why is that? Because, remember, every single point on this line is a solution. Since they're both, it's one line on top of another, and lines go on forever, there's going to be infinite, infinite solutions. A common mistake to a question like this is to say that all real numbers are a solution. That's not true. This point right here, for example, is not on either of those lines. So this point right here is not a solution. Okay, all real, yes, all real numbers is definitely not correct here. <laughs> there are infinite solutions, but that doesn't mean every single point on the whole grid is an answer. It's just every single point along these two lines. I like to say that um, Bill Gates, he essentially has an infinite supply of money. Yes, I know he doesn't really, but I mean, he could spend as much money as he can for the rest of his life, and he's probably still going to have some left over. But does that mean he has every single dollar bill? I have some in my pocket.
I don't have nearly as many as he does, but he does not have my dollar bills. So he's got plenty of money, but he doesn't have every single dollar bill in the whole world. Same thing here. These two lines have infinite solutions, but they don't have all the solutions in the whole world. There's plenty of solutions all over here that are not solutions to this particular system of equations. Okay, I hope that clarifies um, the difference between all real numbers as a solution, which doesn't make any sense here at all, and infinite solutions. Okay, let's try this example down here below. We have y equals 5 and y equals 4x minus 3. These are both ready to graph. Do you remember how to graph y equals 5? Hopefully you recall that is simply a horizontal line at 5. So let's find, figure out where 5 is. 2, 4, 5. So there's 5 and I just draw a horizontal line right there. And there is my line y equals 5. Okay, and now we'll graph y equals 4x minus 3. So we'll start at negative 3. And remember that slope of 4 tells me to go up 4 units to the right one. Up 4 to the right one. Up 4 to the right one. So here is my line right here. Okay, and the point where they intersected was right here. So that means the solution to this one is, let's see, that's 2 comma 1, 2, 3, of course it's 5, silly, 2 comma 5. Okay, so don't get thrown off if you have x equals some number, y equals some number, because if you just remember, x equals some number is a vertical line at that number, and y equals some number is horizontal at that number, you'll be all set. Okay, let's see. Our last two examples, let's see. I will tell you that I'm trying to trick you a little bit. So let's see if you pick up on my trick before we figure it out. So let's look here at these two. That one's ready to graph. This one's not. So let me rewrite this one so that I can graph it. I'll add x to the other side. So now I have a positive 3y on the left and then x plus 9. And I need to get the 3 by itself, so I divide both sides by 3. x divided by 3, I'm going to write that as 1 third x instead. And then 9 divided by 3 is plus 3. Okay, so now I'll just graph these two. Let's go back up top to the blue one. I need to start at positive 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is right here. And follow the slope, which is up 1 over 3 up one over three. I'm running out of room so I can go back down one back three if I want. Okay, and I'll connect these. There's the top one. And now I'll graph the orange one. I need to start at three. One, two, three. And I have a slope of one third. Up one to the right three. Up one to the right three down one to the left three. Connect these. Huh. Now, sometimes it can happen that your lines, mine don't seem to intersect here at all. It can happen that I just didn't draw them long enough. That can be the case. Sometimes they have an intersection point. It's just way off the grid. But, um... I don't think these are ever going to intersect. And how do I know that? Because in the last video we talked about in writing equations of lines, we talked about parallel and perpendicular lines. These are parallel lines. They're in the same plane, but they will never intersect. And one way to know that you have parallel lines is if they have the same slope. So the slope of that one was one-third, and the slope of this one was one-third. And you want to check that you have different y-intercepts. And I do. So when you have the same slope, different y-intercepts, you're always going to have parallel lines. So if I had recognized that before, I, I didn't even need to graph these, because I can just look at these two equations and tell you they're going to be parallel. So what's my... Remember, the solution to a system is the point or points where they intersect. But I don't ever have that here. So that means no solution. And that makes sense because they never will intersect. Okay, so 
I was trying to trick you there. Hopefully you picked up on it. No solution because the lines are parallel, they will never intersect each other. Okay, last example for this video. Let's take a look. Oh, good. How convenient. They're both ready to graph, so let's just go ahead and hop to it. So I'm going to start at positive 3, and then I need to go down 1 to the right 2. Okay, connect these dots best I can. Line it up. And in orange, x plus 1, that means I'll start at a positive 1. And then I need to follow the slope, which is up 1 to the right 1. Okay, and I'll connect these as best I can. Uh-huh, and their intersection point is... Oh, hmm. Here is one of the great limitations to solving by graphing. If it does not, if your graphs don't intersect at what we call a lattice point, which I'll just flip back to another example. These two lines right here, they intersected very nicely at 2 comma 3. That's a, called a lattice point where these um, blue lines of the graph intersect. In our example that we just did, it's somewhere in that box, but I really have um, not a whole lot of an idea where that is. Is it two and a half? Is it two and a fourth? Two and a third? I have no idea. So the best I could do is approximate. So I really don't know where my solution is. So does that mean, that doesn't mean that there isn't one. It just means that I'm probably not going to find it by graphing. I can guess. I know it's close to, uh, I'm sorry, why was I saying two and a half? That's only one and a half. So it's close to one and a half comma two and a half. It's close to that. Do I know that that's it? No, but I can find it another way. All right. And in the subsequent two videos, I will show you how I can find out exactly where those two intersect. Because right now all I have is a guess. All right. So if you want to just make note that a limitation of solving by graphing, solving systems by graphing, is that you may to approximate. And we don't usually like approximating because we're mathematicians and we like it to be as precise as it can possibly be. So I don't like leaving it like this. So stay tuned for the next video and we can figure out exactly where they intersect.